Welcome to Sisters in Crime's Murder Monday, where authors talk about their crime craft. My name's Carmel Shute. Um, I'm the Secretary of Sisters in Crime and standing in for Karina Kilmore, the usual interviewer. At Sisters in Crime, we've been celebrating women's crime writing since 1991. Before I introduce Melbourne author Megan Golden, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of country throughout Australia and recognise their continuing relationship to land, waters and culture. We pay our respects to their elders past and present and emerging. Now, Megan, you've spoken at a couple of Sisters in Crime events before, once in 2017, when your first novel, The Girl in Keller's Way, had just been published about a body found near a, um, a desolate forest in America. <clears throat> It went on to be shortlisted for Sisters in Crime's 2018 David Awards. During the first lockdown in 2020, thanks to the miracles of Zoom, we managed to speak to you again about The Night Swim, your third novel, which featured a true crime podcast in the United States. Meanwhile, you've sold film rights for your second book, The Escape Room, which is set almost entirely in a lift or elevated, as they say, in the US. And now, despite the difficulties of homeschooling your three children during two years of, two long years of lockdown, you've managed to publish another thriller. Like all your, your novels are set in the United States. So you have a very impressive international work history, having worked as a correspondent for Reuters and other media outlets, where you covered war, peace, terrorism, and financial meltdowns. In the Middle East and also Asia. So we're delighted that you've chosen to turn to crime. Well, crime <laughs> fiction anyway. <laughs> so before we start this interview, could you give us the elevator pitch for your latest novel, Stay Awake, just out with Michael Joseph, an imprint of Penguin? Um, sure. So um, Stay Awake is a noir novel and it's um about a woman who wakes up in a taxi and um, goes up into to her apartment uh, in New York and discovers that there are strangers living there. And they promptly turf her out and she discovers there's a bloody knife in her jacket and um, realises something very strange is going on, but she doesn't know what. And the movie then propels from there. The only clue she has is she has the letters uh, stay awake written on her knuckles. So that's the only, pretty much the only clue that she has as to what's going on. And um, it's very much a book that uh, really um, puts the reader into the plot effectively. So um, I don't want to give away more than that, but that, that <laughs> would be how I'd pitch it, yeah. Thank you. So now for some questions. What started you on a life of crime? Mm -hmm. I have always loved reading crime and um, I very sort of plot driven, lots of suspense. I love thrillers. Um, and so when I decided to start writing novels, it was a natural progression for me to write crime. And I have to say that I have, um, <clears throat> it's funny because I'm a bit of a scaredy cat. So, <laughs> um, so I have a certain tolerance with crime. Like I, I don't like horror, for example. So it's really within that sort of thriller, but uh, not too extreme uh, um, uh, spectrum of thriller where you're starting to get into sort of the horror uh, type of thrillers. And what triggers you to write on a particular theme? Um, I usually, I, I read a lot. I mean, I read books a lot, but I also, I'm a journalist by profession. So I, I read news constantly and uh, lots of magazine articles and stuff. And I'll, I just see bits and pieces, things that will intrigue me, um, places or voices or stories or little anecdotes. And from that, I'll sort of it'll sort of germinate in my mind and then I'll kind of come up with the kernel of an idea for a book. And what's your writing routine? Um, it's been a bit crazy, my writing routine, because of COVID. Um, so, and also my kids are getting older. So what I did when I wrote um, my first two books, The Girl in Keller's Way and The Escape Room, was my kids would go to school and I'd write and then I'd come home from school 
and um, you know, do their whatever they were doing. And then when they go to sleep at around nine o'clock, I then write again. But as my kids get older, they go to sleep later. And due to COVID, you know, they've been underfoot for two years um, up until a few months ago. Um, so I was just really writing whenever I could. Um, whenever I could get a few moments, I would write. Um, and it's a, it's was you know actually quite a stressful way of writing, um, but um, it was the only way to do it with um, the lockdowns that we had here in Melbourne, which were among the longest in the world. Um, and parts of that that time, people, as you know, weren't even allowed to leave their houses. So it was just about scrambling for whatever time I could get. So how do you work out plot, twists, and red herrings? I have a very frustrating writing process, which I would love to change, but it seems to work for me. And that is that I, um, I just sort of have a vague, I, I have an idea of what I want to do. I often have an idea of the sort of general arc of the story. And sometimes I have an idea of the ending but I really don't know very much at all. And I just start writing and kind of immerse myself in the plot. And often the plot and the characters will lead me into all sorts of different directions, which will involve potential red herrings and twists and all of that. Um, but generally speaking, I don't have any idea in advance what, um, what's gonna happen. Well, my next question was going to be, are you a plotter or a pantser? <laughs> <laughs> So yes, I'm definitely a pantser. I'm a pantser who wants to be a plotter very much. Um, but I have to say that, and I've tried to do with Stay Awake and I've written a new manuscript, which will come out next year, hopefully. Uh, and even The Night Swim, which is my book that came out during lockdown. Um, I really tried to be a plotter. I really, really tried to, um, and it just never happened. I, I don't have the discipline to think out the story in advance, but. Also, I often find that there are opportunities that I would never have anticipated in a million years, things that happened in my story that in a million years, I could never have thought of that idea. And then it just sort of comes up as I'm writing because the characters are in a certain place or something's happened and suddenly a whole world of opportunity opens up. Um, so um, yeah, so there is an advantage for being a pantser for sure. So how much research goes into your, your novels? It depends on the novel. Um, Stay Awake is a very much a very noir psychological thriller. I, I guess there wasn't a certain amount of research because of the, I don't want to give away anything, but there was some research. It was less, uh, probably less research than The Escape Room, which was set in Wall Street. And I really had to understand the whole Wall Street culture and mindset and of high flyers. And the night swim, which was about a, a rape trial. And so I had to deal with a lot of legal issues and issues around sexual assault and um, how they brought to trial and all of that. So um, those two books had a lot more research than Stay Awake. Stay Awake is very much a psychological thriller. And um, while there is there are certain aspects of research, um, it's not um, it's less than the previous two books, I would say. So who should pay, play your central character on screen? I've been thinking a lot about that. Um, and it's it's very hard to know because, um, because um, you know, I mean, it's all sort of, uh, I guess, it's like fantasy football, right? So, <laughs> but I did think that Margot Robbie would do a, a great Ooh. job with, um, yeah, with, but she'd have to change her hair color for the role, so. Um, <laughs> that can be done. You just have to yeah. go to the chemist. Yes. So do you start with the plot or the character? Um, oh, um, it, again, it's very dependent on the book. Um, with the Stay Awake, I had a concept that I had. I, I, I was trying to achieve something. I wanted a book that was... Um, put the reader in the mindset of the character who's sort of trying to figure out what's going on and is confused and has amnesia. Um, so I guess that's an aspect of the plot. Um, but the book is very much driven by the character. So it was, I think for Stay Awake, it was a combination of the two. I kind of knew it's very character driven, but I, I kind of knew what I wanted to do in terms of the, the concept. 
So, um, but it really changes for me depending on the book um, where my starting point is. So how many drafts do you do before handing your novel in? Um, well, my novel's normally handed into my agent first in New York, and then um, and then um, they then pass it on to the, pub, the the publisher. So it's hard to give an exact number, but because but you're, you're usually probably two, and then it will go to my agent. Sometimes they might want me to make a few changes, and then so in that case, there might be a third draft which will go to the publisher. And then often they then want some changes. So then I guess it's a fourth draft that we then work with through the editing process, which itself results in you know, additional drafts as you edit it as well. And how do you feel about weapons? Um, I have um, no problem with weapons. <laughs> I, um, I, um, I, I'm a bit nervous whenever I write about guns. Um, because um, I know that people who know about guns and they read about them in the books, they're very, they know their stuff and they can pick, you know, they can really pick up on, on any mistake. So i America. Really, yes, yes, indeed. Um, so when I have written about guns, I've found myself going to great lengths to try and understand all sorts of crazy things like the firing mechanisms. Because for example, I remember, I think in the escape room, I had a gun and I wanted to put it on a, on a, um, on, um, I didn't want the gun to be active or whatever. I wanted it so, um, I can't remember what the word is, but anyway, I wanted it to be um, inactivated and that particular gun, I went and read all these manuals and discovered that that gun doesn't have that. So you had to, you had to do it a different way. So, I mean, these are not things that come naturally to me. I've never used a gun before. And, you know, we, we live in Australia where, you know, they're hard to come by, thank goodness. But, um, but um, yeah, especially guns are very challenging because you really want to be uh, accurate with that. Tell us something we don't know about your main character in your latest novel. Um, hmm, my main character, Liv, um, she is a, well, she's a magazine uh, reporter and, um, She's living this amazing life in New York, the life that she dreamt of working as a magazine reporter. And um, then she is confronted with the terrible trauma that turns her life upside down. <laughs> All right. <laughs> is, that, is justice always served? I personally don't like it when justice is served necessarily. I like kind of more twisty kind of um, um, ironic even endings. Um, I, I like sort of very classical psychological thriller type of ending. Um, and The Girl in Keller's Way had one of those endings. But my dad, who is in his late 80s and has probably read every crime novel ever written. And, um, and I guess I got my love of crime from him. He was also a, a retired lawyer. Uh, he's very vehement about the fact that the bad guy has to, <laughs> has to have a very nasty ending and the nastier the better as far as he's concerned. <laughs> so he's drummed that into me in recent times. Um, and it certainly for readers is a more satisfying ending. Mm. So how do you decide on titles? Uh, well, we're grappling with the title of my new book um, um, at the moment. And um, even Stay Awake, we went through a few titles. I, I, it's funny because um, The Girl in Keller's Way in the Escape Room, I knew the titles straight away. I think even as I had the, the initial idea for those books. Uh, whereas The Night Swim and Stay Awake, I struggled with. Um, in the end, my... Um, publisher came up with those titles and the new book we're still figuring it out um, it's really hard because um, so many you I don't like repeating myself I, I like to be an original but if you look at the titles um, so many almost every title's been used at least once um, and um, you know so it's it's hard and, and and also there's sort of very genre specific titles too you know readers expect a certain title for a certain genre so I, I, it's, it's tough. And, and then you walk into a bookshop and you just look at shelves of books with titles and 
you, it's 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 sort of you try and think of something that's different and you can't because it's all covered there everything um every possible title in the world because of course so many books are published um they're all taken so um I, I always struggle with that i think title is really really important uh, i think it can really make or break a book and and it's one of the hardest things to do in terms of um finding a title that fits with the story and the plot and and works you know in commercially um in terms of engaging readers and firing up their imagination as well so it's a tough one so any tips with dealing with publishers for dealing with publishers um i i mean i've been lucky i maybe not lucky maybe everyone's had the same experience as me but i've had wonderful publishers here in australia with penguin random house and uh, in the us with st martin's macmillan uh, as well as in other countries too uh, and so I've always had really good relationships with them, but I'm, um, I can say this is that I'm not overly precious when I'm editing um, manuscripts. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm quite open to getting other feedback and, and adjusting the manuscript. And uh, I think that helps establish a good relationship. Uh, and I do that because I was a journalist for so long that you're just used to that situation where you hand in an article and then it gets edited and it's just par for the course. Um, and I also find that when I write, I've written, you know, it's a very um, solitary process writing a novel. And I guess some people give their novel, I like John Le Carre, for example, his wife was his editor and she'd see his daily, whatever he wrote for the, his daily output. And so he'd get immediate feedback, but I don't have that. And so until I've written a book, I don't really know if it works, what works, what doesn't work is the, um, you know, is the killer too obvious or is there enough suspense? I don't know any of that. And so the first time it's read is usually by my publisher, my, by my agent. And then it goes to the publisher. So I really value the feedback that they give me because um, because they're really the first people to see it, and they really are able to you know give me that uh, ability which I can't do because I was part of the creative process where they tell me what works, what doesn't work, what needs to be developed further, um, and um, and so I think that really helps in terms of having that good relationship with the publisher, being able to take their their feedback and input and collaborate in terms of getting the very best possible book um, ready for publication. So what's your top writing tip? Um, my top writing tip is just to write. Um, it's so overwhelming. When, when I um, started writing, when I decided I wanted to write a novel and I found that I thought, oh, I'd never be able to write a novel. It's just, it's too difficult. I actually went on to Google and I didn't even know how long most sort of commercial fiction books were. I had no idea. And I went on up onto Google and I saw that they were around 80, 90,000 words. And I thought, you know what, that's not so bad. This isn't War and Peace, which I think was 250,000 words. Uh, 80, 90,000 words is doable, um, but you have to break it up and do it over a period of time. And, and that means really writing every day. And if you can write, you know, for example, 1500 or 2000 words a day, then a 90,000 word novel could theoretically, the first draft could be written in, you know, six weeks uh, or two months. Um, and that's something that's doable for most people. I mean, some people uh, have crazy busy lives and they, they, you know, it might take them three times, it might take them a year. But you really have to keep writing. You have to keep writing every single day, um, you know, whether it's 500 words or a thousand words, whatever it is, because it all adds up. And at the end of the day, after a month or three months or, or a year, you've suddenly got a manuscript and maybe it needs editing and some rewriting. But once you have a, a first draft, you've got something that you can already work with. And finally, the last question. How would you get away with murder? <laughs> um, I, um, it's funny because we live in this digital world and our, of um, our phones tracking whatever we do and, our, and CCTV cameras everywhere. And uh, I have to say that you'd have to just completely abandon anything digital and go completely analog, no phones, no nothing. Uh, and I think cash, <laughs> use cash. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that, you know, that would probably be if somebody wanted to get away with murder, then that would be the way to go. Um, 
That's what right. I do anyway. <laughs> well, thank you. And let's hope Stay Awake sells a million copies and there's another, you know, international bestseller for you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Sisters in Crimes Murder Mondays uh, are available on our YouTube channel and uh, they go up mid-month every month. Thank you, Megan. Thanks for having me on. <laughs>